Yo, what's up guys? So in today's video, I'm going to be going over all of the best settings for Apex Legends in Season 12. These settings are going to help improve your FPS, make your game run smoother, decrease visual clutter, increase your visibility, and just overall give you a competitive advantage. I'm going to be going over each individual setting and talking a little bit about why it's the best. These are easily the most popular videos on my channel by far, and I love doing them and sharing this stuff with you guys. So if you've been sub for a while, you've probably seen these already. But if you're new to this channel or are just looking for some good Apex settings, this video is going to be absolutely perfect for you guys. But very quickly, before we start the video, if you guys do enjoy this content and it helps you at all, please do consider leaving a like and a comment as it helps this video and my channel out with the algorithm so much. Now we can get to the video and talk about these settings. So now that we're in game, we're going to head over to our settings. And the first thing we're going to talk about is our gameplay tab. For interact prompt style, you want to keep this on compact. It's going to save you a little bit of screen space because there's not going to be large unnecessary descriptions on the items that you're picking up. Button hints, I keep mine off. This one's not a huge deal, but once you get used to the game and your keybinds, I'd recommend turning it off. Crosshair damage feedback, you definitely want to turn this off. This is one that I used to get a lot of questions about because they'd ask you like, why would I turn hit markers off? You know, I want to see when I'm hitting the person. But in Apex, there's a very distinct sound when you're hitting your shots. So keeping that crosshair on is completely unnecessary and it just introduces extra visual clutter that you don't need that will probably harm you more than it helps you, especially when it comes to tracking your enemies. For damage numbers, I have this set to stacking. This will make it so it shows only one number as compared to floating and both, which will give you a small list for each time you hit the enemy, which introduces more unnecessary visual clutter. So set it to stacking is that's the most efficient. For ping opacity, I have mine set to faded. Obituaries, definitely turn this on. You always want to be seeing the kill feed, looking at the kill feed. There's no reason to have this set to off. For mini reputation, I have it set to off. Now this is a setting that I just recently changed. I had it set to on for forever. However, I like off better now as I feel like it's easy to read the map as north is always going to be facing up. Weapon auto cycle on empty. I have this set to off. For auto sprint, I definitely recommend turning this to off. When you have auto sprint on, it causes a delay with readying your weapons when you're coming out of sprint, which is especially noticeable on shotguns. So keep auto sprint off so that you have full control of your weapons at all time. Double tap the sprint. This one's personal preference. I have it set to off because I like just hitting my shift button once to be able to run. For incoming damage feedback, I recommend 2D. You can even use 3D, but do not use both. Is that that causes extra unnecessary visual clutter on your screen. Taking damage closes the death box or crafting menu. Turn this off. There's no reason to have this on whatsoever. If you have this setting on and you're trying to armor up a box and you get shot, it's going to keep kicking you out of that box. Hop up, pop up. I have this set to off just because there's no reason to have this on screen if you know what the hop ups do. Streamer mode, I have this set to off. This can potentially be a good setting though. If you're a player, when you see someone good in your game that you know, and it causes you a little bit of anxiety and makes you nervous to fight them, keeping this on could potentially help with that as it just shows the legend names in game. So you'll never know or not if it was a good player in your game and you'll fight them just as you would any other player. For anonymous mode, I have mine set to enabled just because there is a fair amount of people who know who I am and keeping this enabled could potentially stop people from targeting me and playing like freaks. Usage sharing, I have mine set to disabled. Performance display, you wanna have this set to on so that you can see your FPS and ping at all times. Club invites, I have this set to disabled because I'm already in a club and I don't need more unnecessary invites. However, if you are looking for a club or you wanna join one, keep that enabled. For reticle color, this all comes down to personal preference. However, I do have a custom reticle. The setting that I'm using right now is a cyan blue. It's 0, 255, 255. Now there are a few colors that I would recommend. Bright yellow is good, white is good, and a bright green is also really good as well. I do have a couple of videos is covering this already and I will leave those linked. For colorblind mode, I have it set to Tritonopia just because it brightens up the game a little bit, makes the colors pop more. Subtitles turn this off. That's just more unnecessary text at the bottom of your screen that you don't need. Subtitle size, just keep this to normal because we already turned them off. Enable accessible chat features, set that to off. Convert incoming voice to chat text, turn that off. And play incoming text chat to speech, turn that off as well. So now let's head over into our mouse and keyboard tab. For sensitivity, I play an 800 DPI 1.5, which is a pretty medium sensitivity for Apex. It equals out to to about 35 centimeters per 360. Now a sensitivity range that I would recommend on 800 DPI would be anywhere from 1.0 to 2.0. This is another setting that is largely personal preference, but I feel like that range is pretty optimal for this game. As you go any lower, you're gonna lose out on the ability to make fine adjustments easily. And if you go any higher, it's gonna be very hard to control. So for anyone new to PC and is looking for a sensitivity, 1.5 is a very good middle ground, I believe. But do experiment on your own and find out what's comfortable for you. These are all of my ADS sensitivities. I like turning them up the higher the optic goes because on default sensitivities, higher zoom optics are going to feel really, really slow. So just bumping those up a little bit can help a lot. But like I said before, personal preference, this is what I use. You can copy these if you want and mess around with it, but it's important to find out what's comfortable for you. Now, very quickly, I'm going to scroll through my keybinds and show you guys all of that. And then I'm going to talk about a couple that I feel you guys should really use.
Now, the first thing I want to talk about is tap strafing. If you're on mouse and key, you 100% need to bind tap strafing to your scroll wheel. It's really simple to do in the movement section on your key two on move forward, set this to either mouse wheel up or mouse wheel down. I prefer mouse wheel up, but it's not going to matter which one you do. This is going to be a preference. And the next thing we need to bind to our scroll wheel is jump. So just head over to your key two on jump and whatever one you didn't use for your move forward, you want to use that for jump. I use down. That's what I find comfortable. Now it doesn't show in my settings, but I do also have interact bound to my scroll wheel up. So I technically have two key binds on that one scroll wheel. You can't do this from the in-game settings alone. However, if you are interested in this, I will leave that video linked as well. So now we're in the controller tab. I'm not going to be talking about anything controller just because I don't know anything about it. I've only played it for probably a total of 20 minutes. So now let's head over into our video tab. For display mode, always have this set to full screen. It's going to give you a little bit better FPS and it's going to lower your input latency drastically. Now for aspect ratio, I'm playing 16 by 10 at the moment. A couple of videos ago for my 2022 updated settings, I was playing on native because it was to my understanding that a lot of people on YouTube don't necessarily want to see stretched res. But after asking around a lot and running a couple polls, I realized that most people don't really care as long as it's a pretty clean stretch resolution. So speaking of clean stretch resolutions, 1728 by 1080 is definitely going to be your best bet. It gives you the perfect amount of stretch while still maintaining good visual clarity. 1680 by 1050 is also really good as well. That's what a lot of popular pro players use. But once you start to go lower than that, your game is going to pixelate a lot and you're going to lose a lot of clarity. So if you do want to play stretch res, I'd recommend using either of these. 1440 by 1080 can also be a good option as well if you really want to stretch it, but that's a little bit too much for me, so I stay away from that. Native res is also really good as well. There's nothing wrong with using 1920 by 1080. This setting here is also largely personal preference. You know, I've played native, I played stretched. I don't notice a huge difference between the two, but going back and looking at my gameplay from both, I do feel like my aim is a little bit better on stretched res. For brightness, I play on 60. I feel like this brightens up the game just enough for me and also kind of drowns out those shadows a little bit. Going up to 70 would also help a little bit more for that, but it starts to wash out the colors a little bit. So I do feel like 60 is kind of like that perfect middle ground. For FOV, I use 110 personally. Now I have a lot of people ask me why I don't use 120. And the reason for that is if I ever wanted to participate in a tournament, 120 isn't allowed. So I just want to be used to that 110. I don't have any plans to play in any tournaments, but if anything did come up where I wanted to pursue competitive in the future, FOV ability scaling, you want to keep this to disabled. This will make sure that when you Octane Stim or Bloodhound ult, you're not getting that extra FOV, which in turn will mess up your sensitivity a little bit. So turning this to disabled will keep your sensitivity sensitivity consistent. Sprint view shake, keep this to minimal. You don't need that extra shaking on your screen when you're running. It's not going to do you any good. Now under the advanced settings for VSync, keep this off at all times. There are absolutely no reasons to have VSync enabled in game. The only time that you would want to mess with VSync is in your NVIDIA control panel if you're using something like FreeSync and you have your FPS cap to below your monitor's refresh rate. But other than that, don't mess with it at all. Don't mess with it in game as it causes a huge amount of input delay. Now while we're on the topic of input delay, NVIDIA Reflex, keeping this enabled will ensure that you have the lowest amount of input delay possible. Most people won't notice a huge difference with this. However, I would still recommend for everybody to turn this on as there isn't really any downsides to having it on. Anti-aliasing, I have mine set to none. Turning this on does smooth out the jagged edges, but to me, I feel like it makes the game look really muddy and blurry, and I definitely feel like I have better visibility when it's off. Texture streaming budget and texture filtering does come down to mostly preference. I use very low and bilinear, which is the lowest texture filtering setting, just because that looks perfectly fine for me. I don't need my game to look amazing. However, if you do want your game to look good, you can crank these up just about as high as you want to and you won't really notice a huge performance hit, but you will notice a big difference in the textures and it's going to make your game look really good. Ambient occlusion quality, have this set to disabled. Sun shadow coverage, set to low. Sun shadow details, set that to low. Spot shadow detail, make sure this is disabled. Volumetric lighting, set that to disabled. Dynamic spot shadows, disabled. Model detail low. Effects detail low. Impact marks, disabled. And ragdoll is on low. These settings aren't necessarily going to make your game look the best, but it's going to raise your FPS a ton, lower your input delay, and still give you enough visual clarity to where you're not missing out on anything. Now, lastly, let's head over to the audio tab. For master volume, I have mine set to 50. This is all going to come down to whatever you have your windows volume on, what your ears can handle. I have my windows volume on 70, so 50 is kind of loud personally. This game has really bad audio when it comes to footsteps, so cranking that up to as high as you can with being able to take that is going to help you out a ton. For voice chat input device, set it to whatever microphone that you're using. For voice chat record mode, for the love of God, please set this to push to talk. We're in 2022. There's no need for an open mic. I don't need to hear you guys eating chips or dogs barking in the background. Incoming voice chat volume. I have mine set to 50 as the default 100 is kind of loud. Sound effects volume. Always keep this on 100. Don't mess with your sound effects volume. If you want to adjust something, change it in your master volume. For dialogue volume, I have mine set to 70 as having it set to 100 was kind of loud, but you do need to have this a little bit high just so you can hear those voice lines in game for when you're getting third-partied or even now that they just recently 
added. Your legends in game will yell when they crack somebody. Music volume, I have it set to zero. Lobby music volume set to zero just because I don't care about the in-game music. However, if you guys do want to hear that, setting it to a low value from like 10 to 20 will be okay. Just don't go too high because sometimes when it's playing the music when you're dropping in, you might not hear somebody next to you. Sound and background, I have it set to off. Play incoming text chat to speech, I have it set to off. And convert incoming voice chat to text, I have that set to off. And convert incoming voice chat to text, I have that set to off as well. Now guys, that is actually going to do it for today's video. You know, I've been using most of these settings for a long, long time. And just about everyone who's watched these videos and used these settings has seen a good improvement in their gameplay and how their game runs. And if you guys see an improvement as well, please do leave a like on this video as it helps so much. It means a lot to me as well. Like I said before, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace.